Hey, and thank you for clicking play. It finally arrived, Squadrons for my PlayStation 4, also compatible with PSVR. I did a quick live stream when it first arrived, which were my genuine first impressions. I think you're right, because I'm at that stage already where I actually just want to fly into something and kill myself. I think I should kamikaze. Why am I repairing my hull? Bloody hell! To divert power to lasers, up, yes. <laughs> so that's, yep, that's my quote, and I hope, yeah, I hope this thing records the chat. Yep, that's a quote from me. This game made me want to kill myself. Um, I'll put the link down in the description, so if you weren't there um, and you haven't seen that yet, please do take a look. But there were my first impressions. What I want to do, though, is compare this to this. X-Wing from 1993. Why this? Well, this was my first ever um, game that I bought um, brand new from a shop for my first PC um, back in the day. And I loved this game, not just because I'm a Star Wars fan, but also because I'm a fan of these. I was always on my Amiga before my PC, a fan of F18, F-19, F-29, flight sims, and there were plenty, plenty more. What did I love so much about flight sims? Um, these were back in the days of flat shade polygon graphics, so, you know, at the time we thought they were great, but uh, um, it was the game that was the immersion, not so much the, the um, visual representation, although at the time that was plenty good enough for us, we didn't know any better. But it gave you freedom. So you would be presented with a mission. You would be able to load out your aircraft and maybe have a choice of aircraft. Um, and then you began the mission and really success or failure was entirely up to you. There was no script. There was no storyline really hindering um, the gameplay. It was literally would just let you sort out the details for yourself. It would let you work out the best strategy in the heat of the moment in the field of battle. And that is what X-Wing did in a Star Wars Galaxy universe. Yes, there was a storyline. Yes, it tied in with canon. But other than that, it gave you the freedom to, to a point, choose your vessel. Didn't let you choose your loadout, so we will talk about that. But it certainly let you manage your own strategy in each mission presented to you in the tour of duty. And it was really up to you when you attack certain targets, how you took them out, that kind of thing, within certain parameters. But you certainly didn't feel hindered by them. And that is what I want to see if it's replicated in this. So what made X-Wing for DOS PC in 1993 so good? Um, flat shade polygon, polygons were still the go-to predominantly at that time, but they still represented the Star Wars galaxy well. Um, from, you know, the X-Wings, the TIE fighters, the main, sh the main fighter ships, all the way up to the corvettes, the frigates, the transports, over onto the Imperial side, the Star Destroyers and, and all of those kind of things. Um, they were all there and they were all represented really well. As you progress through the tour of duty, the battles got larger and more complicated, but the strategy for success in each battle was always left up to you. You could configure your shields front and back, um, depending on if you're attacking or defending, um, and you could do that incrementally. Um, and you could configure all your energy within your fighter. So you could choose to um, take energy from your lasers to make your shields recharge faster, um, if, if that was advantageous to you. Or you could choose to dump all the energy from your shields and your lasers into your engines to give you a speed boost to maybe make a quick escape. Or if you're really on the offensive, uh, sacrifice some speed in favor of fast laser recharging. Um, and all that again was could be done on the incremental level um, really easily. If, God forbid, um, you were out of shields and your ship took a direct hit um, and sustained damage to different systems, um, you could even change the priority order that your R2 unit would actually try and repair those damaged systems as well. The music was dynamic 
And without skipping a beat, it would actually change the music it was playing to convey what was happening within the mission at any given moment. In short, you really felt like you were piloting an X-Wing Starfighter in a battle and a tour of duty that had an effect in an ongoing struggle against the Empire. The X-Wing franchise has had uh, many successful titles, including um, obviously X-Wing, um, which had a couple of expansions, including Imperial Pursuit and B-Wing. Then you had TIE Fighter, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, um, and X-Wing Alliance, and then you've also got X-Wing 98, which is a texture mapped high res version, I say high res version of the original 93 X-Wing as well. We've had Star Wars games in recent years, um, but most of had space battles kind of tacked on and the controls felt really simplified and arcadey. Battlefront EA was probably the worst, but have EA come over to the light side? Is Star Wars Squadrons, EA, X-Wing 1993 for the modern gamer. Let's compare them and find out. Now, I do need to point out that while um, Squadrons has multiplayer, uh, has online, it has fleet battles, to compare it against X-Wing, I'm going to compare the single player campaign. In X-Wing, while flat shade polygons, the ships are all there and represented well, um, with a great feeling of scale and dread as you take on the larger Imperial ships. Equally, uh, the ships available uh, to you on the fighter level include the X-Wing, A-Wing, Y-Wing, and by way of paid download content, sorry, sorry, expansion pack, um, the B-Wing is available as well. Each has its own strengths and weaknesses. The Empire comes at you with TIE Fighters and TIE Interceptors and will attack your fleet with TIE Bombers. Squadrons is much the same. Some missions let you choose your ship, while others force you into the best tool for the job, just as X-Wing did. The scale and representation of the fleets on both sides is there in Squadrons, as we'd expect. But the modern graphics, sound and music, of course, um, bring the realism and immersion up to modern standards. There's no denying that Squadron's initial construct is similar to the X-Wing franchise, while simply looking stunning as we'd expect. But what made X-Wing so great was the management of your own fighter mid-combat. You could shift power between systems on incremental levels, uh, between engines, lasers and shields. You could also balance your shields front and back as required, Yes, all of this back in 1993. None of this is new. So in Squadrons, whilst these systems management tools are not a new idea, they are faithfully recreated. By default, they are simplified. However, you can opt to make them incremental in the options menu, um, recreating the options of the original game. Oddly, I've actually began to favor the new simplified way of balancing, uh, which is sort of more all or nothing, dumps of power between systems with a single touch button to balance everything back across the board. And the same goes for shields. They can be equal or 100% front or 100% back. I actually prefer the way X-Wing did it, which was a little bit more incremental and gave you a little bit more flexibility. Okay, so they've got the ships, they've got the graphics and the sound are great, um, and they've got the same game mechanics, but what's it like to fly? I'm happy to report that again, Squadrons has gone more simulator than game. Thank goodness. Pitch um, and yaw and roll, um, along with throttle, those are your main options and anything special that you pull off really is down to how you combine those um, simulator facets. No spoilers, but there are a couple of combo moves to achieve, but they don't get in the way of the purity of most combat. So this comparison, I must say, comes down to what is it actually like to play? 
All the elements are there, I think. As a diehard X-Wing fan, I'm delighted to say that the mechanics I was hoping for are indeed all represented in squadrons. But how do they actually hold together? In X-Wing, much like my beloved flight sims, you're presented with a mission, briefing, and success or failure, for the most part, is down to whatever strategy you dream up. Direct your wingmen to take out one target while you defend the fleet, or vice versa, um, or, or wing it. Um, you're not forced into one single solution, ever. Squadrons lets you direct your wingmen. However, whilst the mission briefing is a thing, this is where I feel storytelling starts to get in the way. In squadrons, I don't feel that success is dependent on my strategy, but on my ability to follow the strategy dictated to me by the script writers. Don't get me wrong, battles feel epic and one mission flows into the next, but scripted and timed events beyond X-Wing's mid-missions moments of change just seem more on rails. If I can spot the script, it's not hidden well enough, and that breaks the flow. So while we're on the topic, another thing that breaks the flow uh, is the script writing of when I can approach a target. Um, in X-Wing, if a Star Destroyer jumped into an area, I can approach it, and probably to my peril, I can attack it. Um, I won't be able to destroy it until it's a mission where I'm meant to destroy it, but I can, I can attack it. I can certainly approach it and attack it. In Squadrons, if I approach a Star Destroyer before the script writers want me to, I'm greeted with a stupid floating triangle pointer thing that completely breaks the illusion and the immersion, um, pointing me back towards the battlefield. Um, and if I don't follow its directions, I will just explode. There is nothing more annoying in this game than that mechanic. There is nothing like that in X-Wing. Infinite space feels infinite. In Squadrons, my worst enemy is not the Empire at all. It's that stupid floating black triangle marker that breaks the entire illusion that I'm a rebel pilot in deep space. It's an unnecessary mechanic and it's lazy level design at best. Such a little thing has a massive impact. Likewise, I don't know who to blame for this, but in-game, uh, the in-game training prompts completely pause the game and break the illusion as well. Um, and again, they're really not needed. X-Wing came with a manual. Squadron does too. Don't treat gamers like idiots. X-Wing trained you via a series of um, training and historic missions. And even if you skip these, the missions in the tour were designed in such a way that one mission trained you in the skills required for the next and the next. I'd argue the mission structure is still similar to that of X-Wing, but the strategic choice has at least to some degree been taken away. X-Wing did a great job at holding the story together um, with a very few series of cutscenes after a, 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 a completing a few missions. Squadrons, however, is a much more of a cinematic extravaganza uh, between each and every mission. And not only that, but aside from listening to each mission briefing, you're expected to interact with characters back at base to fill in on additional plot holes and gossip and character progression and extra tips and all of those kind of things. They say the single player campaign is about eight hours worth uh, with all the cutscenes and character interaction. I'd be interested uh, to know how much of that is actual playing a campaign and how much is just been hogged by the script writers, to be honest. Many people have already completed Squadrons and it's a brand new game. 27 years later, I've still not completed X-Wing and that's a good thing and modern game developers need to realize that. The cutscenes are even more intrusive if you're playing in VR and you're fully immersed in that 3D environment and then you're pulled out into a cutscene on a virtual cinema screen in front of you, back into 3D again, back into another cutscene. The simulation 
experience is completely lost once again at the expense of storytelling. But that does bring us on to one thing that must be discussed. How good is Squadrons in VR? I only have the base model PS4 using a PSVR version 2. How good is it? I can't tell you how good it is. I can't show you how good it is. You must try it for yourself. You simply must. If you're at all a Star Wars fan, if you've ever dreamt of flying an X-Wing in battle against the Empire, you can't live another day without trying squadrons in VR. You really can't. Looking around the cockpit, outside the window at your own S-foils, beyond that to the massive ships in your own fleet and the imposing shadows of the enemies, further still to the amazing backdrops um, over and above any simple star field uh, of the more traditional games. In 2D this game is good, in 3D it's not a game, it's an experience to behold. If you want a modern rendition of X-Wing, there are mods being made for Star Wars X-Wing Alliance and a lot of work has been put into these, um, into modernizing these aging titles and I really hope that it's work that is not wasted um, because Squadrons comes very close. Despite its reliance on script and story, kudos has to be given, I'm sorry, for clearly not only being aware of the X-Wing franchise, but clearly doing their best to remain faithful to it um, without making any promises they can't keep. They didn't call this X-Wing versus TIE Fighter EA, after all. My initial first impression stream, I ranted for about an hour, but I couldn't help break that rant with the odd moment of stunned amazement, uh, amazement and enjoyment. Feel hindered by the storyline, it was there to tentatively, I'm in an X-Wing, all right, I'm happy. Oh, I'm now in an X-Wing, there's no reason why, but here we are. Look at this! They're working on it. Okay, Echo Squadron on me. Yeah, thanks, thanks, dog. The recording will be up. I'm in an X Wing now. Echo leader here. Admiral, any luck pinpointing that distance? Oh, this is so much better a ship. Those poor Imperials, I tell you, they got it hard. Look at this! This is like a freaking Ferrari compared to those TIE fighters. Little Admiral Malat bar in the corner there. Echo, prepare for systems check. Coming back around, Squadron. Look at the ships! Look, this is, okay, all right. Now that I've played Squadrons in both VR and also in 2D for this comparison, I think this quote from Squadrons sums it up more better than I can. You're right, sir. It is good to fly old school again. But that's not the whole point of this video. Yes, the video, I think, and in all fairness, Whilst the campaign may be short and stifled by storytelling, thank you EA and all those involved for clearly trying to make a faithful representation of the good old days of the X-Wing franchise. The true story behind this video isn't how good Squadron is, but it's how good X-Wing remains. So many of those facets, despite the simplified technology and really only suffering low resolution and lack of texture maps, Pretty much all the facets are here back in 1993. Well done EA for producing Squadrons. I think I'm gonna enjoy it long term. Am I gonna enjoy it after 27 years? I don't know, but I know I'm still enjoying this. Thanks guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Yes, I will. There's a live stream next week, 8 p.m. Perth time. Look up what that is in your time zone. All right, cheers guys.